Well, the grand home opening for Switchback Soccer is tomorrow. It's the first official game at the new Widener Field downtown. Thousands expected, and if you're going, it's a good idea to have a parking plan. Bill Folsom live at the field tonight looking at some of those options for folks in advance of that big game. Bill. Yeah, we got a little tour around here today. A beautiful stadium. Look down here along Cimarron Street. You got the stadium, plenty of room on the sidewalk, but notice not one parking space on that side. And come on over here to the east side along Sawatch. We count it. There's about 10 spaces down there, and multiple of them are really for people with disabilities. It's the same situation all the way around the stadium. Really, no parking around the stadium. That's on purpose to maximize stadium space, but also because they've done studies showing right around this area, there's plenty of other parking. Parking. Finishing touches making for a busy day before the grand opening day at Widener Field. On the eve of a, of a big day in our history. More than 4,000 people expected in these seats. As COVID eases, there can be 8,000 for soccer matches and 15,000 with seating on the field for concerts. Most of those people will be looking for parking. They won't find any at the stadium. The average walk is about seven minutes and certainly you can get closer parking than that. And we've come up with a diversified parking model, which has people parking in various locations throughout the city. City parking managers participated in the planning process. From just one corner of the field, you can see metered parking on streets, the surface lot at the new Olympic Museum, one county parking structure, and another. It raised the question, why build more parking when these options have more than enough spaces during the hours when the field is hosting events? To utilize what we currently have rather than just building event structure parking for just, say, the stadium. We have double the amount of parking that we need. Planners believe this also prevents post-event traffic jams, the ones where thousands in the same parking lot are trying to get out a few gates and merge onto one or two roads. Instead, the crowds here thin and leave more smoothly from across downtown. So there's not an overload at intersections generally surrounding the stadium. Pay more at a meter, less at a parking structure. Arrive early if you want a short walk or park near the restaurant or club you want to walk to after the game. It's a good idea to check out in advance the parking map on the Switchbacks website. If you like static maps, we have that for you. If you like digital maps, we have that for you. And a reminder, if you haven't been downtown in a while, it is now parking that you pay for all the way till 10 o'clock at night. That is seven days a week. And if you notice on that map, Switchback Stadium, it was at the very bottom of it. That's the south side. All the parking that they showed is this way to the north, north of Cimarron Street. So if you're coming down, don't go to the south. All the parking they recommend is that way. Watching after you, Colorado Springs, Bill Folsom, News 5.